first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Greetings, greetings. Once again, we're back with Dr. Alain Bay show. And um, today, we have the esteemed journalist, Deborah Wellington, as well as also she's going to be interviewing um, King Kevin Casey, um, mixed martial arts. Um, he's on the TV show Ultimate Merger, and then um, they're going to be talking about um, his musical career, as well as also um, certain aspects of health, his training, as well as also, um, I guess, the TV show, um, reality show in which that he's on. So we're going to get into that, and we're going to bring him on in. I just want Hello. to thank you so much to Dr. Alan Bay for making this interview possible. I'm all the way out in the East Coast. I definitely want to welcome Mr. King, Kevin Casey. He's in the building of the sizzling, sizzling hot show, The Ultimate Merger, hosted by Miss Supermodel Takara, definitely on Thursdays, 9 p.m. on TV One. Welcome, Mr. King, Kevin Casey. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on the show, Deborah. Of course, of course, we had to. We had to. We had to enlighten our audience with your insight, of course. All right, all right. Okay, so let's just get dive right into the questions. Definitely, I want to ask you off the top, what is it about Takara that intrigued you to compete against 13 other men for her love? You know, uh, in the very beginning, I didn't have a lot of information about Takara, but I knew that she was on America's Top Model and, and that she was uh, a plus-size model. And, uh, you know, going on, on, on a show of that magnitude and being a plus-size model, that gave me, you know, somewhat of a, a, a good understanding of some of her uh, personality. You know, it showed me that she's very confident, that she's, uh, you know, able able to, you know, face adversity and still try to prevail. So, you know, I knew that this was a woman who was determined, and, and I, I definitely want to get a, a good understanding of what she really was about. Okay. That sounds awful. That sounds awfully amazing, definitely. Now, now that you have actually had the chance, the opportunity to be up and close with Miss Supermodel, Miss Takara, 
yes. how would you describe her, her persona? Many describe her as being fabulous and also self-centered. But how would you describe Takara? Takara is an amazing woman. She's definitely uh, charismatic. She's, uh, you know, well-spoken. She knows how to command, command, uh, you know, uh, command the attention and, and keep your, keep you, keep you focused on her. You know, and that's what it's about. She has an amazing brand, and I think she's, uh, she's just at the beginning of her career. Definitely, definitely, it definitely shaping up to be that way. Now, when to, when Jason, your other castmate of the Ultimate yeah. Merger, when he kissed Akara and he told, basically, he kissed and told. You appeared to be frustrated. Is that an action that you frown upon or despise someone who kisses and tells? You know what? Uh, Jason hadn't really shown himself to be the most trustworthy of, of the Bachelor. So, you know, initially uh, I, I took it to be a false statement, you know, the way that he presented it. So, you know, I, I thought that it would be a good strategy, you know, on my part if I was to expose him, you know, to be a liar in front of Takara. So, you know, it turned out that Jason was telling the truth about the scenario, but, you know, it still worked in my favor for, uh, you know, strategy-wise, my approach to the situation. Of course, of course. Now, it's no secret that you and Jason are not on friendly terms. When Jason approached you, you advised him to stay away. Did you expect to physically fight him, or did were you able? You know, did you know that you would be able to withstand and execute self control? You know, uh, you know, I definitely, you know, conduct myself at a, as a professional at all times. So the last thing I was going to do was initiate any type of altercation, you know, especially on national television. That's that's not what mixed martial artists, you know, represent. And uh, you know, I was definitely ready to defend myself if if the situation, you know, escalated there. But uh, you know, I, I felt pretty confident and comfortable that you know Jason was just letting off some steam, and you know, he was, you know, he got a little emotional because of the kiss that went on. So, you know, I, I let him just blow off some steam and vent a little bit, and, uh, you know, later on he, he, he came to his senses. <laughs> well, well, we were happy to see that you were actually loyal to your ambitions and you stayed and maintained control. So kudos to you for doing that. Thank you. Now, Chris, Nick, and Sebastian. Hmm. Now, mm-hmm. these young men claim to have their own language. Do you feel as though the show has taken a racial turn? You know what, uh, Chris, Chris, Nick, and Sebastian are, are definitely uh, they're, they're good young they're good young kids, you know, and um, they could be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, make, 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 made a bad judgment call in regards to the situation that is uh, that is going to arise. But uh, overall, they're they're good kids, and uh, I just think they their judgment was clouded. You mentioned the terminology, kids. As if we're speaking about teenagers. These are actually grown men over the age of 21. <laughs> okay. You no, know, sometimes, sometimes uh, grown adults make uh, childish decisions, and uh, you know, I think in this case, it'll be shown that uh, that was one of the the times that it will be a prime example of that. True indeed. True indeed. Now, I just, I definitely want to explore some of your other versatility, other characteristics. You're also a mixed martial arts fighter. Wow. That's really yes. intriguing. Now, what is your mindset or your motto upon any competition? Is it stay focused as your haters multiply? Well, the the thing is, it, it takes, uh, you know, although the sport has exploded on, on the scene internationally, it uh, it really takes a, a, a lot of a lot of discipline and many, many years of of training, you know, very, very hard training to go out there and do what you do under pressure. You know, so, you know, I definitely my my motto is hard you know, hard work. Hard work and um, you know, you're gonna get out what you invest in, in the game. And so I I'm always prepared to, to go hard and I'm always prepared to to present myself as a martial artist rather than as a cage fighter. You know, so I, I've, I've dedicated many, many years into teaching, you know, teaching different um, different people in the community the art aspects of fighting. And, uh, you know, then I showcase, you know, on the elite level the, the full contact aspects of fighting. But initially, you know, I'm a martial artist first and I'm a peaceful person and everything's about self-defense. 
But um, due to the sport and, and, and putting everything on display, you know, now now it's about, you know, going hard as well. Definitely. Now, mixed martial arts sounds like a very vigorous, very intense training. What kinds of food do you consume when you're training for a fight? I definitely cut the carbs out of out of the diet. There's a lot of natural carbs that you can get from, you know, different drinks or different fruits. But the carbohydrates are at a minimum. Uh I like I like chicken and fish. I yeah. eat red meat maybe once a month. And uh all of my vegetables I I've stayed close to the dark dark green vegetables such as spinach, you know, asparagus, broccoli, things like that. And um, you know, all all of my meals are, are measured out. You know, I, I consume four ounces of, of protein in each meal. And I, I break down my meals into a, of about five to six meals per day. You know, the idea is to keep the metabolism running at a high rate. That way your body is constantly burning, burning fat and burning off, you know, excess things that it doesn't need to sustain. Of course. A body in motion stays in motion, of stays course. Stays in motion. <laughs> now, do you hydrate your body with alkaline water? Definitely. I have a, a system called the, the Kagan system, which is ionized water. And, uh, you know, this system is a is a system that, that really helps, you know, my performance, and it brings my, my body into a, a, a balance called homeostasis, which, you know, keeps all of my levels where they should be at all times, especially, you know, putting putting myself through the, the rigorous training and, and everything that I'm doing, and my body has to be running on all cylinders. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. I, I definitely know that alkaline water definitely increases your energy levels, and it definitely gives you that energy so you can endure. I can attest to that. Good to know. Good to know. Now, you have a black belt. Would it be fair to say that one that has or has acquired a black belt has discipline? Uh, definitely. And uh, anyone who has gone through, you know, there's exceptions to every everything, but uh, anyone who has gone through the system has, has definitely learned a lot about themselves, a lot about, you know, patience. And uh, just going through that process, Builds builds a lot of character for each individual that that has done that journey, and uh, you know I would recommend martial arts to to everyone. You know, especially the youth. It uh it starts it starts a, a core of discipline and lays the foundation for you know a positive and healthy future. Of course, so we can build and build and build and rebuild. Now, how did your journey begin? How, what intrigued you about martial arts? Well, I've come from up under the uh, the Gracie family, which is a family that was yes. started in Brazil, and they started with uh, the. I believe that the Gracies learned the actual traditional, the traditional J- Japanese jujitsu, and they modified they modified the jujitsu and made it into the Brazilian brand, which focused a little more on submissions. You know, submissions are when you get your opponent to give up. And, uh, you know, I met I met a Gracie when I was about 11 or 12 years old, and I became very, very close friends with uh, Hoxon Gracie. And uh, his, his father was the legendary Hickson Gracie. And, you know, from there, you know, just through friendship and being close to the family, I was able to learn the art. And um, I had a good, a good door, a good op- opportunity to step into the sport and, you know, be under you know the best the best guys in the world. Now, you just recently mentioned the act of submission to submit to surrender. How do you feel about MMA martial mixed martial artists who surrender or submit during their fight or competition? You know, I, I don't you know I don't like to talk uh, or speak negatively you know about any other fighter, but the way that I was brought up under my system. You know, surrender was never an option. We were taught that, uh, you know, you train hard and and you you prepare so that you know on the day of the event that 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 doesn't even enter your mind. You know, so it, it's just something that that never never comes to thought during a fight. You know, to give up. 
you know, so I'm mentally okay, prepared. Okay, so definitely. To, excuse me? Yes. So definitely yeah, the, so, the mindset of a com- competitor is to win, win, win. Well, it's not just about winning. You know, I learn I learn a lot more in the ring from a loss. But there's a difference between losing the fight and giving up in the fight. I've lost fights before, but I've never given up in a fight. You know, so I, I've never spiritually, you know, given in to, to any opponent. There, there, there's been opponents who have defeated me, but uh, I, I don't feel like anyone has ever beat me. I've never given up. Hello. Deborah? Um, I don't know what might have happened to Deborah, um, but we're going to try to keep it going until she can get back on here. All right. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, Brother Casey. Um, I know that um, when you're dealing in the realm of martial arts, let me ask you, how many styles do you know? I uh, My foundation is in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but I, I've also done kickboxing and, and traditional boxing. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of different aspects to, to every art. That, that helps refine your game and, and helps to, to give you this, this kind of total package. You know, at this point in the, in the sport, everyone is, is, is excellent and everyone's well-rounded. So to, to go in there, you know, you, you really want to go into the ring with, with every tool possible to give you the best opportunity to, to become successful. Right, because I understand that the more styles you know, more than likely – um, those various styles will bring you up um, and bring you out of that ring as a winner um, nearly every time. The uh, the best approach, you know, that I would recommend is to be a professional, be be excellent at one aspect of fighting, and then okay. start to cross train and and work on the weaknesses of your game. But you you definitely want to be a professional at um, at least one aspect, whether it's the striking or the groundwork. You want to be very, very, very efficient at one and then support that by well, by, by polishing your game with the rest of the tools. Right. So that would include wrestling. Um, of course, as you said, grappling holes, um, as well as um, hands and feet, you know, um, what what is some of what 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 you would think what what is some of the um I guess the best strikes that you have actually used in the ring you know that you have thought that you know to you you know was was just excellent the best strikes for uh for a striker I would recommend using a good jab you know the the jab is off the and and that's that's what you use to to measure out the situation. You know, you don't want to always go in there and engage someone looking for the knockout, especially if that person happens to be more advanced than you in that area. But um, you know, a good jab will set up a lot of things for you, whether you want to finish it with a knockout or whether you want to take the fight to the ground. So I always recommend to have a good tight, you know, stiff jab in your arsenal. And that's beautiful because that's the basics in boxing. <laughs> so, um, no doubt. Um, well let's let's I don't know if she wanted to get into this. I'm waiting for her to come back on before she get into um your your music. You know, where um I know that you um have a flair for the arts of rap or MCing as we would say. Yes. You know. Um what what is it that you are working on um in that particular realm that we need to know about? Well, I, uh, you know, I, I started off about 10 years ago freestyle rapping, and, uh, you know, I, that was a way for me to fine-tune the, fine the, the aspect of, you know, using my voice as an instrument. And uh, within the last year, I've recently finished recording, you know, a complete album. So I try to, I try to make my music uh, 
very versatile due to the fact that, you know, I'm an athlete trying to, you know, make it make the transition to a mainstream artist, I definitely wanted to, to give a lot of different looks, a lot of different sounds to my music. So sometimes I'll make a, a song for the club. Sometimes I'll make a song that's, that's for the ladies. Sometimes I'll, I'll make a song that will be a little more conscious, you know, to socially wise, and, uh, you know, just try to give as many, many looks as possible to the people. That sounds good. Um, like, what type, now when we come to, to um, rapping or emceeing or rhyming, um, is there any style in which that you would say, oh, man, I drop both of them. Are you there, brother? Yes, I'm back in. All right, all right. All right, we back with King Kevin Casey, mixed martial artist, as well as also uh, one of the um, 14 bachelors on um, the show, um, Ultimate Merger with Sister Katara, um, who is um, a former model on um, on, on the Sister's um, show, uh, um, she was on um, this show. About how many years ago was that? I believe it was season three of Tyra <laughs> Banks. Tyra Banks is a man. Right. right, right, right. Okay. Well, we're going to get back into the information as far as the um, mixed martial arts. And um, you was talking about the jab, how that was um, definitely um, the basics um, in which that you will want to be able to um measure your opponents with. Um, any other um, advice for those who might be interested in that particular field? Excuse me? I said anything else as far as um, any other advice in which that, you know, for those who might be interested interested in that in that particular field of mixed martial arts? Yeah, just, just train hard, you know, train hard and, you know, be focused and, and dedicated to your craft. And uh, you know, watch watch the guys who who came ahead, and watch you know watch the great the, the greats of the sport. And uh, you know, you always have to polish your techniques and just keep working hard. Okay, all right. And also before um, the technical difficulties, we was talking about um, your MC and skills, and um, and you said that you already have an album out right now. What's the album called? The album hasn't been released officially. I'm just okay. finishing up the uh there's about fifteen tracks that I have done but I haven't released it yet. So I'm I'm waiting I'm waiting for the right time to, to present it to the to the public. And uh I wanna I wanna schedule it somewhere around one of my, my bigger fights. So I'm I'm looking within the next, you know, six months to a year to drop the, the completed album. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, so, um, as far as you're concerned, the music on there is going to be definitely, um, still popping by 2012. <laughs> definitely. All right, all right. All right, um, well, um, who's some of your favorite artists, um, today, you know, or maybe in the past, you know, who, who's some of your influences? You know, the, you know, my, my favorite artist will have to be, uh, you know, the late, great Tupac Shakur. You know, someone who uh, you know had a hard, a hard edge to his music, as well as a you know a, a conscious perspective at the same time. So you know, I, I try to I try to be as versatile as possible. You know, I I like uh, I like Common, you know Nas, you know there's, there's a lot of different artists that uh, that I've listened to through the you know over the past years, and you know I try I try to be uh, as original as possible. You know, I definitely don't don't listen to anybody and, 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 and copy any of their style or anything like that. And um, you know, but I've been influenced by by music as a whole. All right, all right. Well, who might be some of your favorite um um R B or soul singers, you know, groups, uh, you know, solo. You know, any influence as far as that's concerned? You know, not not too much R and B. You know, I, I I'm not big on the R and B myself, but uh, you know, occasionally, you know, I might I might throw in some some Barry White or something like that if I have a you know a female friend over or something like that. <laughs> okay, okay, 
little bit of Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> you know. I got you. All right. So, um, so what do we? So what can we expect on the album? You know that. You know what to you? What's one of the um, the best songs to you um, that you think that you have on it? That's one you of know, your favorites. Uh, I would say the most. The most. Uh, the, the, I, I believe that the song that people will connect with the most will be a song called Angel. And, and what it was, you know, um, my mother, she requested that, you know, that I make her her own personal song, you know, similar to the way that Tupac made his, his Dear Mama track. And, uh, you know, I created the track. It took me about a... It took me about a week to to finish writing the song and and putting everything together, and uh, the end result was was an amazing, amazing, amazing song. And you know, due to the fact that you know everyone has a mother or had one at some point, I, I think that people will connect to to the emotions that that I, I convey in, in that song. Man, I'm feeling it just. I'm I'm feeling it now just from you talking about it. You know, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna be checking for that um uh, when it comes, you know. Uh, and as well I think that um um everyone else who's listening to this definitely will be checking for it too. Um you know, um now let's go back to some of the questions in which that Deborah was asking. Um, she asked you about the um alkaline water. How how did you get into the alkaline water um information or you know, um, I think you're saying that you have the Kangen water machine or the system. Right. A friend of mine actually had the system, and uh, they gave me a little bit of the background, you know, as far as it, you know, it, 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 it's, it's ionized water, al- alkaline, and it helps to balance the body out. And, they, you know, and then I researched it a little bit. And uh, it's been proven that, that the drinking that water can also – help to prevent and also help to treat cancer. And uh, that was something that, you know, I was amazed by because, you know, it, it doesn't, it, you know, it tastes the same as regular water. It, you know, it's just, uh, it, it, you feel like a little bit, like, like the water is charged. You know, there's an, ener- an energetic aspect to the water that when you drink it, you feel it. And, uh, you know, I've always been amazed by it ever since I started drinking. I've been drinking it for about, a, I would say, a year and a half now. Oh man, that's excellent, excellent. Um, we have the Kangen water machine also, so I know exactly what you're talking about as far as the energy levels, and um, you know, I mean the the way that a person needs to wake up every morning is feeling re- recharged, and if individuals are not waking up every morning feeling like that, then there's something wrong, and um, this water definitely helps with that. I mean, we 75 percent water. The Earth is three fourth percent water. You know, three fourths on water. You know, and we are, you know, three-fourths water, 75% water also. So, I mean, one of the major things that we need to focus on is the water aspect. And if we're taking in or getting the right water, you know, and um, a lot of, we had a lot of us getting acidic water, you know, water that's not even past 7.0, you know, which that um, in order for the cells to um, to oscillate properly, the cells have to be, you know, 70 to 100 um, hertz. You know, and um, you know when it comes to the water, um, it needs to be um above um seven point three to seven point four um pH balance. You know, so definitely. You know, so um, let me see. So, um, what would be the average day for you for your workout? You know, um, when you're training, um, what you do on an average day? You know, I I, I run um I run my training to at least you know, four hours a day, at least that, that's the minimum. And, uh, you know, I may start off with a run on the beach, about 3.5 miles on the soft sand. From there, I, I'll, I'll set up a second train, which will, will, even, will, will either consist of uh, some striking training or grappling training. You know, depending on my day and the schedule, I may alternate which one comes first. But I'm definitely doing uh, at least three sessions to four sessions per day, you know, and, and, and that covers everything. That covers, you know, my cardio, that covers my weight training, that covers my striking training, and also my grappling training. Mm, mm, that's that's excellent, brother. I mean, that's, that's, that's real dedication, 
you know, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very hard work, and uh, the best feeling in the world is to, to go out there and, and be successful. You know, you're training anywhere from three to four months for any one particular event, you know, so you're, there's a lot of investment that goes on when you're when you're training for one of these events. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely um, see the de- and hear the dedication. Um, it definitely takes um, a lot of work. And um, you're doing it, brother, you know, definitely. You know, um, we appreciate the time that you're putting in into it, you know. Um, you're part of um, Strike Force, right? Yes, sir. All right. So um, what's your next big um, fight or, you know, next event? You know what? I don't have anything um, locked in right now. And um, okay. I'm actually in the process of renegotiating my contract. So okay. we'll, we'll see what the uh, what the next move is for me. All right. Well, if they got any sense, they're going to bring you back. Um, so <laughs> that's, that's, that's just the way it's going to be. You know, and, um, you know, be able to record that into the universe and decree that to be, you know, to make it so. Um, well, I mean, do you have any um, final words to um, give to the audience? You know, I definitely want to have everybody look out for me on Facebook, you know, look up Kevin Casey. And then uh, on the Twitter, you know, Kevin K.O. Casey, K.O. like knockout. And, uh, you know, show some support and, you know, follow follow me. And uh, I'll give you guys inside tips and details of what's going on in my day-to-day life. All right. Um, so what, what's the um, exciting new thing that's going on now on, on the show? I can't give you too much information, but I'll tell you that, uh, you know, uh, in the, this next show will be a, a definite display of the, the physical the physical uh, level of each bachelor in the house. So, you know, everybody everybody talks the talk, but now it's time for everyone to walk the walk. So we'll see who um, who fails and who prevails. All right, all right. Well, y'all heard it here. Um, this is King Kevin Casey, and I'm like you said, follow him on Twitter, follow him on Facebook, check him out. All right, he's one of the 14 bachelors on Ultimate Merger. And, um, yo, we love you. We appreciate you. Keep doing your thing, brother. All right, thank you. All right. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intentions straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>